Hello chess fans, in today's video we are going to check out an absolutely amazing attacking game which was played at the uh, Singfield Cup in uh, St. Louis. Jan de Pomnesi with the white pieces is playing against Anish Giri. Two top guns and an incredibly sharp game. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Make sure to watch this video from beginning till the end and hopefully you will learn a lot of interesting uh, new uh, concepts which you can apply in your own games as well. As I said, attacking chess at the highest level. It's also a clash of styles. As I would say, Jan de Pomnesi is a very creative player. You usually... Uh, not afraid to take uh, some risk, whereas his opponent, Anish Giri, has a very classical style, solid style, difficult to beat him. But uh, once he is out of his preparation, well, uh, things can uh, can become very interesting. So let's have a look. Let's dive straight into the action. And if you would like to see more fascinating games from this uh, event, make sure to hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications and come back frequently to this uh, channel. So here we go, as the first move of the game is a 1d4. Knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3. And here Anish Giri played a move bishop to b4. It's the well-known Nimzo Indian defense, e3, castling kingside, and now the move uh, a3 played. So this is uh, what is called the uh, Samish uh, variation. White is uh, hitting the bishop. Of course, the bishop is going to take the knight. And now after taking with the pawn, white has double pawns, but it also does strengthen the center. But the question is, if this center is becoming a really uh, strong force, uh, with also the potential of uh, the bishop pair, uh, or is black able to exploit the weaknesses, uh, for instance, the, the double pawns? Well, that's what we're going to figure out in the next uh, couple of moves. Black played here the move d6. Very typical move, as uh, now with the pawn on d6, black is about maybe to go e5 or maybe playing c5. But look what uh, Napo does here as he played f3. It's another pawn move, move 7. We have basically seen only uh, pawn moves here, apart from the knight getting developed to c3, but the knight is no longer there. So all white's pieces are still on their initial squares. But white is playing super ambitiously with, uh, with his move f3. Black has different ways of uh, playing, decided here to go for the move knight c6. And now white goes for e4. That's of course the main point of uh, placing the pawn on f3. So you're supporting this advance. Now the white pawns are occupying the, the center. Black played, remarkable move, interesting idea. Queen e8. If you see this for the first time, you may think that's a beginner move. What is black contemplating here? Well, we will see it uh, very soon. And uh, well, also here, white has a lot of uh, plans like a traditional plan here, something like bishop d3, followed by knight e2, and complete your development by castling kingside. Napo is from a different planet. He is having a different style, and I guess that you would not, you would not expect his uh, next move uh, at, uh, at this point. So let's see. He goes for incredible move, h4. That is another pawn move. I mean, we have seen these kind of ideas in, in modern games. Um, engines, they always really like to uh, to come forward with uh, with the H-pawn. The plan is to bring it up to H6 and to provoke weaknesses around uh, the black uh, king. Black plays B6 and white just continues with the move H5. So here are big, uh, big questions. What should black do? Should black really try to stop the march of um, that H-pawn? If you play H6, for instance, I think white really wants to go for the move G4. And then this pawn on H6 is a hook. You can um, use it um, by playing the move G5 next, trying to open up the files towards the king. And then also that uh, rook from H1 will, uh, will get into play very soon. So black decided to refrain from making any uh, further concessions, didn't play the move h6, but play the move bishop a6. Very thematical way of playing, as uh, the pawn on c4 is usually a target for the, for the black minor pieces. Now, another fascinating uh, moment, because what is white gonna do? Is white really gonna push here further? Like, if you go h6, probably black is going to, to keep the king side closed with uh, with g6. So how is white really seriously going to um, create something on the, on the king side? Well, then the next move, 
may also come as a, as a shock to you, Rook A2. This is very fascinating concept and um, people who have been uh, watching this channel for uh, from the very beginning, they will probably remember that famous uh, game from the World Championship match between um, Ding Li Ren and Jan de Pomeshi playing with the black pieces. It's not exactly the same position, uh, by the way, but it's about the concept. Like White has more space and is now trying to use the second rank for his rook to come over to the to the king side. And that's exactly what happens because Black continues his announced plan with the move knight a5. He's attacking the pawn on c4 for the second time. And White doesn't want to um, focus on that part of the board. Continues here with the move g4. Black goes for queen c6, attacking the pawn for the third time. But now it's rook g2. And it's something I would never recommend to beginners to play like this. It feels very unnatural to um, develop your rooks, to play only with pawns, keep your king in the center. But the, strangely enough, the white king is, uh, is quite safe here. Bishop takes pawn, so black is a pawn up. Bishop takes c4, queen takes c4. Attacking the pawn on uh, c3 as well. You don't want to lose a second pawn. So white puts the knight on e2. Now all of a sudden, white's pieces are quite nicely placed. Like the knight is guarding the king, the pawn on c3. There are no open files, so uh, the black major pieces, the queen and the two rooks, they are unable to uh, to pose any problems to that uh, white king as being stuck in the center. The king is quite safe as long as the files towards the king remain closed. Now white is planning to go g5. So black anticipated that by dropping back to, uh, to d7. But white continues here with the move g5. This, this pawn march looks, uh, looks very dangerous. e5, trying to open up the center, attacking the pawn. But white doesn't want to uh, react at all. Played here the move g6. Look at this, these two rooks are hoping that uh, the files are getting opened and then uh, the black king can easily get in uh, in trouble. How should black respond to it? You can take the pawn, you can ignore it, you can try to uh, keep the files closed. Probably in hindsight, the, the, the best move here for black is uh, to play the move h6 so that the h file remains closed, the rook on h1 remains out of play. But it's a very difficult move to, uh, to play because I guess that white is probably going to think about sacrificing the bishop. Now, uh, we should not analyze it too deeply, but I would like to show you one interesting line. If you take the bishop, the queen can come to d2. If you are able to take the pawn and then you're threatening checkmate, this looks incredibly dangerous. Apparently, king g7 is still in an amazing defense, defending the pawn. Now, after taking the pawn on f7 with check, you can run away with the king, and if you do take the pawn now, I mean, white is having quite a dangerous attack, but apparently, with a move like king e8, looks as if black is able to uh, to hold on to the, to the position. So, interesting uh, line. I think uh, h6 is a good move, but Giri decided here to take once on, uh, on g6, and now h6, g6, and now you have to understand that uh, h6 no longer is a really good defense because if you sack the bishop and you, you take it, then queen d2 followed by queen takes h6. The big difference is that the rook from h1 is also uh, joining the attack. So here, Giri had a different plan. He uh, didn't play h6. He just captured on f3. So grabbing very important pawn, getting almost access to the white king. But white also continues here by taking the pawn on uh, uh, h7 with check, king h8, rook hg1. The king can hide nicely in the corner, but now the new target is the pawn on uh, g7. Black doesn't have that many options to, uh, to defend that pawn. Played here rook f7. And now we have seen this uh, idea already in a different form, but you can also just go to h6 without capturing the pawn. Bishop h6, fantastic move played here, threatening to take the uh, pawn on uh, g7. And then 
The main point is uh, trying to force black to take the pawn on h7 when the black king no longer has, um, has any support, no, um, no uh, shelter from his uh, own pawns and also the white pawn is uh, no longer there then. So bishop basically has to be taken. But now the rook comes in to uh, g8 with check. Pawn on h7 is very important here. If you do take the rook, you recapture with promotion of the queen. That is checkmate. Fantastic line. So you got to take with the king on uh, h7. And here white captures the rook on a8. Apparently black is not getting mated immediately, but you are an exchange down as white. Um, sorry, white is an exchange up, I mean, of course. And black has two pawns for it. So materially speaking, looks okay uh, for, uh, for black. But his king is still quite open. The knight on a5 looks... Um, Looks a bit odd, offside, but also white's king is in the center, but still not easy for black to uh, to attack it. Now, various options. Giri um, really tried to consolidate his position here with the move knight f6. Probably it's not the best move. In hindsight, a move like queen c6 to, to hit the rook, to uh, consolidate the position and also try to hit the pawn on uh, e4 is uh, probably a better way of uh, defending. But let's check what happens here because after knight f6 white captures the pawn on e5 and the one of the main ideas is that obviously if you do recapture then the d file is open and the white queen comes into d8 threatening checkmate in the corner also the rook on g1 is just cutting off the king is not able to escape so this is leading to checkmate now of course this is what giri had anticipated uh, and rather than taking back on e5 he wants to take with the knight on e4. And probably he was thinking that everything is under control. The center is getting more opened. The knight is nicely supported by the queen. It's an incredibly complex position. But I assume that he missed the next move by Napo. As here, an amazing resource was uh, introduced by a former world championship challenger. By playing the move queen to c1. A fantastic way to get the queen involved into the attack. Because, for instance, if you hit the queen here with knight b3, the main point is the following shot. Rook h8, check. Deflecting the king, you got to take the, uh, the rook. And then it's queen takes h6 with almost checkmate. If you block with the rook, it's queen f8. You can only block with your queen. And then it's queen takes g8 with checkmate. So you understand that with the queen on c1, the big threat here is to play rook h8 and it's very difficult to uh, to parry the threat here in fact so black decided here to play the move knight g5 to interfere along the g-file try to close it so that um, the queen is not able to uh, to enter the the king still has some squares but the line is not over yet pretty sure that napo had been calculating the following line which was uh, played in the game from afar he just sacrifice the exchange by taking on g5 now if you do take with the h pawn it's queen takes g5 with a massive attack against the king so that's something you don't really want to uh, to happen black uh, played here instead the move queen to h4 check very important defensive move trying to capture the uh, rook on g5 with the queen now the rook goes back to g3 white is up a rook but the line still continues here with queen h1 check and uh, well if you go with your king to uh, d2 then it's knight b3 with a knight fork you're winning the queen as uh, black so don't do that the best way of playing here for white is rook to g1 blocking the check with your own rook then the line goes further with queen takes rook in the corner as you can see material is Almost even. I mean, black is up two pawns, but in these sort of positions, it's all about the safety of uh, both kings. And white's king is absolutely fine. White is uh, it's white's turn here, so you can give a check on c2. The king gotta go into the corner, and now the queen comes in to g6, threatening the rook, threatening the pawn on uh, h6. So the queen comes back to f8 to uh, protect both weaknesses, and then again another. Very important forcing move is the move e6, hitting the rook on f7 and black is in big trouble here. If you move the rook to f6 to attack the queen, one of the main ideas here 
is to uh, just ignore the threat and play the move e7. Fantastic idea as you're attacking the queen. If you take the pawn, it's checkmate on g8, deflecting the queen from guarding the back rank. As here you can see, it is checkmate. Now, instead of taking the pawn, if you take the queen, it's um, white who's capturing the queen and get a new queen himself. So e6, very good move. Rook f6 is not really an option rook e7 was played and now another beautiful move every move comes with a huge threat rook h1 intending to take the pawn on h6 so the rook got a move to h7 but now it is time for the move rook f1 you're hitting the queen again and well the the queen basically doesn't have a, have a good square to go to for instance if you go to g7 it's queen e8 check you got a block with the queen and then it's rook f8 with a nice skewer you're picking up the uh, queen on uh, g8 so that means that queen g7 doesn't work um, in the game there followed the move queen to uh, to d8 but uh, then white's plan is to jump in with the rook to f7 I mean, you're offering the exchange of rooks, but most importantly, you're threatening checkmate. There's not much black can do. Rook takes rook, pawn takes rook. There's a mating threat on h6. And of course, there are also plans that if uh, if the queen goes away, that you're about to uh, promote your f-pawn. So the queen goes to f8 to, uh, to block the pawn and defend the pawn on uh, h6. Queen f6, check. Only two moves, well, very simple. We can eliminate queen g7 because white will promote his f-pawn and that is game over. So king h7 was played. Does black have ev everything under control? Definitely not because here it's time finally for white to get that knight involved. Knight f4 is an excellent move. Sometimes you are threatening queen g6 so the knight supports uh, the queen go coming there. But most importantly, for instance, if black goes back with a knight to c6, there is knight e6, you're attacking the queen, that is the main idea. And um, then the queen got a move, after the queen goes away, it's time to promote the f-pawn, white will win the black queen. So that means after the move knight f4, Anish Giri resigned. And well, this was a beautiful attack. I mean, look, I mean, look at that position once again um, in the situation. After move e11, we have seen only pawn moves Pawn coming to g4, it's a very unusual concept with the rook uh, getting activated along the second rank. Be careful trying out this yourself in uh, one of your own games. But it's a very interesting uh, attacking uh, concept. But once again, it's not only attacking with this uh, plan. Napal also showed very nicely that with the, the placement of the knight on e2, he's also taking care of his uh, own king. So I, I felt this was a very interesting game probably the most interesting game of the uh, tournament uh, so far i'll keep you posted if there's anything interesting from this event you would like to see let me know i'll try to um, record more videos but as you can see i'm uh, not at home i'm uh, busy coaching at the uh, european youth championships um, supporting the dutch delegation so uh, that's also a pretty tough uh, job for me right now but anyway i'll try to do my best to uh, share the most interesting uh, moments from uh, from this event. So thanks for watching. We see each other very soon again. And don't forget, hit the subscribe button. We need to get more than 6,000 uh, subscribers and then we continue up to 10, 20, maybe 100,000 uh, subscribers one day. But we do it step by step, but I really appreciate all your uh, support. Thanks for doing that. Bye bye.